Hi everyone. In this module, we're going to talk about rational numbers and algebra equations. So rational numbers. Rational numbers are expressed as a fraction, decimal, percentage, or mixed numbers. You must understand these symbols. So this first symbol means less than. So whatever number is over here is going to be less than whatever number's over here. And the way I learned to remember this is that if you think of this arrow as like the mouth of an alligator and he's hungry, he's going to want to eat the bigger side. So this is, the open mouth is pointing at the bigger side. So if the bigger side is over here and the lower side's over here, this means that this number is less than this number. Now if we do the opposite, so now the alligator mouth is facing the other way, this is saying that the number on this side is greater than the number on this side. So this is a greater than sign. So less than and greater than. We all know an equal to. If the equal to sign has a slash through it, that means that two things are not equal. If you have a less than sign, so our alligator mouth is pointing to the greater one on this side and the one that is less on this side. This means that the one over here is a less than. If it has a little line under it, that means it's less than or equal to. And same with the other one. It's either greater than or equal to. So rational numbers encompass all of these different things. So like we said, fractions, decimals, percentages, mixed numbers. So we have rational numbers like 1, 2, 3, fractions, negative 5, 2.7. All of these things are rational numbers. Any number can be that can be written as a fraction is a rational number. Then we have integers, which are all whole and numbers and their opposites of zero. So these are whole numbers regardless if they are positive or negative. So again, a rational number can be an integer, yes. A whole number is all counting numbers in zeros. So this is everything that is essentially a positive number that is a whole number. And natural or counting numbers are numbers you can count with. So the difference is a whole number also includes zero and a natural counting number doesn't include zero. It's just one, two, three, etc. So they're probably not going to ask you which one of these is a whole number and which is an integer. It's just these are some wording to be aware of. Okay, so then we have rational numbers. So rational numbers can be shown on a number line. Values to the left of a number line get smaller and values to the right get larger. So you can see over here, this is a number line. As the numbers move to the right, they get bigger, and as they move to the left, they get smaller. There are also negative integers and positive integers. So a negative integer is anything to the left of zero, and a positive integer is anything to the right of zero. The further to the left a number is, the smaller it gets. So even though 4 is greater than 3, negative 4 is less than negative 3. So we can see here 4 and 3. So numbers get smaller as they move this way. So we can see that 4 is greater than 3. It's smaller, right? But if we look at negative 4 and negative 3, negative 4 is actually smaller than negative 3. And again, we have an integer number line here. We have our positive integers and our negative integers, and zero is neither positive nor negative. So finding the common denominator, you, so as we talked about earlier, you can manipulate fractions, and you can do this to find a common denominator. So when you manipulate a fraction, you have to multiply or divide both the numerator and the denominator by the same number. So remember, we had that example with one-fifth, and we could multiply it by 5. 1 times 5 would be 5. 5 times 5 would be 25. So 1 fifth is also equal to 5 over 25. So let's say we have this equation. So 3 fourths, and we want to know, is it greater than? Is it equal to? Is it smaller than? We want to know what it is in comparison to 2 thirds. So that's kind of tricky, right? If you try to think of a circle, you try to think of 3 fourths of the circle is colored, and then you think of 2 thirds, you think of a circle with 2 thirds color, it's kind of tricky to figure out which one is bigger or smaller because they're, they're close. Um, 
So the way we would do that is we need to convert so that they have the same denominator. So a number that both 4 and 3 go into is 12, right? Because 4 times 3 is 12. So we can convert this to two equations that have a denominator of 12. So in order to make 3 fourths something over 12, we have to multiply 4 by 3, but that means we also have to multiply 3 by 3. So that's going to give us 9 over 12. And if we do the same thing over here, we want to create a denominator that is 12. We know 3 times 4 is 12, and if we multiply the 3 by 4, we also have to multiply 2 by 4. So that gives us 8 over 12. So now we actually do know that 9 over 12 is greater than 8 over 12. And remember, our alligator is trying to eat the bigger number. So this is the way it would be written. So factors are numbers that are multiplied together to obtain a product. A common factor is a number that divides equally into two or more other numbers. And a prime number a prime factor is also a prime number, and prime numbers have only two factors, one and itself. So for example, a prime number would be would be 2, 3, 5, 7, 11, 13, 17, because all of these numbers, like 17, no number goes into 17 except 1 and 17, so that is a prime number. Same with 59. You can try out a bunch of math in your head, but the only numbers that are going to go into 59 are 1 and 59, which is what makes it a prime number. Least common multiples, so this is the smallest number that is a multiple of two or more numbers. So for example, find the least common multiple of 3 and 5. That might be something that you might see on your test. That's a question you could easily get. So. We want to look at what are multiples of 3. So we have 3, 6, 9, 12, 15, 18, 21, 24. The way you would do that is 3 times 1 is 3, 3 times 2 is 6, 3 times 3 is 9, 3 times 4 is 12, 3 times 5 is 15, so on, so on. Now we want to also find multiples of 5. So 5 times 1 is 1, 5 times 2 is 10, 5 times 3 is 15, 5 times 4 is 20. 5 times 5 is 25. So we want to find the least common multiple. So what is the lowest number that goes into both 3 and 5? Or that is a multiple of 3 and 5? And that is going to be 15, right? They will have 15. So that would be your answer. So if we're going to compare the values of fractions, so again, this is the same problem we just looked at in the last slide. So remember I was talking about, you could try in your head to take a circle and fill out three-fourths of the circle or take the circle and fill out two-thirds of the circle. And when you look at it like this, you, you can actually see that, you know, that three-fourths is a tiny bit bigger than two-thirds, right? Because the white part over here is is bigger than this part here, or the I guess you could say the colored part over here is smaller than the colored part over here. So in order to compare fraction value, the fractions must be manipulated finding the common denominator. So we just did that in the last slide. If two fractions have the same denominator, they can be compared by their numerators and fractions that have different denominators need to be converted to fractions that have the same denominator so you can compare them. So we did this in the last slide with 3 fourths, we made it 9 twelfths, we took 2 thirds, we made it 8 twelfths. So the way we compare is by using the numerator, the number on top. So 9 is larger than 8, so that's we know this side is larger than this side. So algebra equations, some concepts to know. So a variable is a letter that stands for a number. So over here in this equation, our variable is x. It's a letter that stands for a number. It's a number we are trying to find out and we want to know, but we don't know what it is, so it's a letter. A constant is a number that is not linked to a variable. So a constant over here is going to be 23 and 45 because there is, it's not like 23x or 23y. It's, it's just a number. There's no other variable linked to it. And an expression is the mathematical equation that contains constants, variables, and symbols. So this whole thing is an expression. 
So the two sides of an equation are equal. Whatever you do to one side of the equation, you must do to the other side. And the goal in solving an equation is to put the variables on one side of the equal sign and its value on the other. So you do this by using inverse operations, which we'll go over. Addition and subtractions are inverse of each other and multiplication and division are inverses of each other. So we have our expression and when we're solving these types of algebraic equations, our goal is to get this variable. So this letter X on one side of the equal sign and then get a number on the other side of the equal sign, right? Because we want to figure out what is X, like what number is X? That's the whole purpose of solving an algebraic equation essentially. So we're using inverse operations. So what that means is if we look at this, right, the first thing we want to do is to use these constant numbers to create one constant number. So we want to get rid of 10 on this side and we want to either add or subtract whatever we're supposed to do to this other side to now get 4x equals a number. And then we can move on to the next step to figure out what x is. So in order to do that, we use the inverse. So if we have a positive 10 over here, we want to subtract 10. And if we subtract 10 from this side to get rid of it, because this cancels it out, because t positive 10 minus 10 is zero. So that cancels it out. But whatever we do to one side, we have to do to the other. So we're also going to minus 10 from 22. So now our equation is 4x equals 12. Now the next thing we want to do, right, because our goal is to get x on this side and a number on this side, but we have 4x right now. So what we want to do is get rid of the 4. So in order to do that, we are going to divide because what you're doing here is 4 times x. So we want to do the inverse. We want to do the opposite. So we are going to divide by 4 and that's going to cancel out and 12 divided by 4 is going to give us 3. So we know that x equals 3 and there we go. We just solved that algebraic equation. So Mm, oh, I'm just going to go here. Oh, wait, I can go here. Okay. So one variable linear equation. So another way to write an equation is ax plus b equals zero, where a is not equal to zero. This is known as a one variable linear equation. A solution to an equ equation is called a root. Example, 10x plus 20 equals zero, where as a does not equal zero. So when they say a, right, because we see ax plus b. So a and b are just a number. They are just a number. They call it over here a coefficient. We have a coefficient, a variable, and our constant term. But so here we can see a is not equal to zero, right? Because a is actually 10 because it's ax plus b. So this is ax plus b. So if we were gonna solve this equation, this is just some technical terms, but if we were gonna solve this equation, the first thing we would do is subtract 20 from both sides, right? Because we wanna get rid of this. So we'll have 10x equals negative 20. And then we're gonna divide by 10 because we wanna get rid of this 10. So we would have x equals negative two. So the root of the equation is negative two, right? Because that's the solution to the equation is called the root. These are some technical terms. All right, so then we have subtraction with regrouping. So if you're going to subtract numbers, the first thing you're gonna do is stack the numbers on top of one another with the largest on top. So let's say we have this problem, 84 minus 56, but it's written in a straight line equals what? The first thing we're gonna do is put 84 minus 56, written like this, one on top of the other. Then you subtract down. Now the issue is, say that this isn't read yet, right? We just have 84 minus 56. The issue is that when you go four minus six, well then you have a negative number and you can't do that, right? when you're subtracting like this. It, it just, that's not the way to do it. It won't get you the right answer. So what you have to do is make four a larger number. Now to do that, you 
you can, I guess, say borrow 10, right? Because this is a 10. So this is a one spot and a 10 spot. So we're going to pull 10 back over to make this bigger. But to do that, we have to reduce this to 7. So if you think about it, 84 is the same, like 8 and 4 is the same as 7 and 14 because this 1 technically should be here to make it 8, if that makes sense. So to summarize, you're going to make 8, 7, and you're going to make this 14. And then you'll subtract 14 minus 6 is 8, 7 minus 5 is 2, your answer is 28. And we can see over here, so each one of these lines is 10. So 10, 20, 30, 40, 50, 60, 70, 84. So this yellow one is should be, if you're looking at the equation first, it would be green, right? But you can't subtract four from six. I mean, you can't subtract six from four, right? Because there just isn't enough. You have two yellow left over. So what you have to do is take 10 from here, which then gives you seven green, but 14 yellow. And now you can subtract the, four, the 6 from the 14, which is going to leave you with 8. And then you can subtract all of these green ones, which are going to leave you with these two rows. So you get 28. It's kind of a nice way to see it that way. So again, this is kind of saying the same thing. If you find a number is too small to subtract, so for example, 4 minus 6 would give you a negative number. You can regroup, as they call it. Regrouping happens when you add 10 to the smaller number and deduct one from the place ahead. So that's what we did here. All right, so that is the end of this module. Make sure to do the practice problems, check the answer key, and I will see you guys in the next module. Bye.